Hey everybody, today I'm just going to start a series of videos over Hail Caesar. So my plan is to do five videos. The first three are going to be over the main phases of the game. So the command phase, which I'm going to do today, the ranged attack phase, and the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase. And then I want to do a video over some of the special rules, stuff like that. And the last video I'm going to do over comparing these rules to some others and maybe a book flip through. So what you see here is this is a division. And a division is comprised of individual units. So here we have one unit with some skirmishers attacked to it, another unit, and another unit, and the division commanders. And an army is made up of several divisions controlled by an army commander or a general. You have a commander rating for each of your commanders. So even on down to the unit level you can have a unit commander. The higher up they are the, the better their command rating is, their command value. So army commander is probably pretty high like an 8, 9, or 10. Division commander is probably like a 6, 7, maybe an 8, probably not that high though. And their unit commander is probably pretty low like a 4 or 5. And so what that means is, anytime you want to do anything, so you want to have these to move straight forward, change formation, or uh, charge, you roll two dice. So that's how it works. So basically, say his command value is six. You want to roll less than six. So one less or equal to their command value, you get one move. Two less, two moves, three or more less, three moves. So his command value is six. If he rolls a five or a six, he gets one move. If he would roll a four, two moves, a three, three moves. And the way that works is, <clears throat> so if he said he wanted to move this unit straight forward and he rolled a three, he could then move this unit potentially up to 18 inches, since infantry has a 16 inch move. Or what he could do is move them up six inches and then cross a ditch and then move them up another six inches. We'll get into that stuff a little bit later. But if he fails his roll, let's say he rolls a nine, then you go into blunders. So the way blunders worked is on a roll of a one, it's called uncontrolled flight. The unit turns around to face its rear and makes two full moves to the rear. So they would turn around give their back to the enemy, move two full uh, turns to the rear. Back, the unit stays facing forward and moves one full move to the rear. On a roll of three, they move one full move to the left. Roll of four, one full move to the right. Roll of five, they move one full move forward. And a roll of six, it's called uncontrollable advance. They move three moves forward. So that could be really bad if you failed like a division order and you have an entire division uh, up in the enemy's territory right away. So that's kind of how blunders work. All right, so, okay, so going back to commanders, you have to complete all your commands with this commander before you can go on to another. So let's say this is another division. You have to complete all his commands before you can go on to another. You cannot come back to uh, one commander after you leave them. So you can't say, okay, this division commander orders his uh, this unit to move forward. And then you can't come over here and say, okay, I will. this division commander moves his entire, orders his entire division forward and then come back to him. You have to complete all moves with him before you can move on to the next commander. And if you fail a command, so let's say he failed his role for this division. He ordered his entire division forward, failed the roll. This division cannot move the rest of that turn. The army commander cannot order them. No one can order them to move. So for off-table units, it's the same thing, except they can only come in one move. Uh, so they can only come in one move away from the table edge. And it has to be an agreed upon before the game starts, or the umpire has to allow it. And then for movement, you have another rule called proximity, proximity of the enemy. So the way that works is, if you're within 12 inches of a unit and you can draw a line from your, the edge of your base to theirs, 
you have to move either straight towards them or straight away from them. So that's how that works. 12 inches away from the enemy, you're in there arc or whatever, you have to move straight towards or straight away from them. Alright, so now moving through terrain. Terrain's pretty simple. Woods, if you're open order, so like skirmishers, a commander or other individually based units like chariots or elephants, you can move through at no cost. Cavalry can move through woods at the speed of infantry. That's the only people who can move through woods. So your big blocks of legionnaires or whatever, big blocks of phalanx, they cannot move through the woods. Rough ground, you can only make a maximum of one move. So your stuff like uh, ruined cities or stuff like that, swamps, you can only make one move. Even if you roll good enough for three, you can only make one. Linear obstacles, so something like, let's say, this wall is actually not that huge and it's just like a little fence it costs one move so if you roll for two moves or three moves one of those moves is, is cost just crossing this wall so that's how that works rivers the way they work is if they if they are uh, small enough that they could be completely crossed with one move it's treated just like a linear object if not then you have to cross at a ford and you have to agree on it before game which is probably a good idea it makes sense to change formation and cross and then you have to be able you have to be completely across the ford not across the river across the ford before you can change back into your regular formations so that can really screw you if you end up across a river the enemy's over there and you're stuck in a column for buildings, only infantry can enter buildings unless it's artillery, uh, fortification, so you know like a ballista on a castle wall that's there at the beginning of the game. For entering a building, it costs one move and you must be up against the building at the start of that move to enter. When exiting a building, you can exit up to six inches away from that building when you exit. All right. So moving through units, the way moving through units works is <clears throat> you can move through skirmishers or open order units <clears throat> at no cost. Or if you're less than half the width of a unit. So if you're like, you know, like that, less than half, you can move through at no cost. If you're more than half, then you have to make a disorder check for each unit. The unit moving through and the unit mo being moved through. So four, five, or six, you're good. One, two, or three, you're disordered. So that's how that works. Moving into other formations, it costs one move. And uh, so formations, you have phalanx, testudo, wedge, open order, column, square. <clears throat> so let's say these guys want to move into a square. Square is the only formation that cannot move. Once you're in a square, you're stuck. It's considered a static formation. You cannot move. Testudo, phalanx, wedge, stuff like that. They can move, but they take a disadvantage. All right. <clears throat> so I'll go into just I'll go into combat just briefly because commanders have uh, a little different system. So the way they work is commanders start off with just two attacks, and the way that works is <clears throat> they they're considered a plus one. So uh, if you have them as a heavy cavalry, they they might only need like a two to hit. And they start out with two attacks. You can add more, but the uh, more attacks you add, the easier they get to hit. So if you leave them at two attacks, the enemy has to roll two dice, and they only hit on an 11 and a 12. Three attacks, 10 up. Four attacks, nine up, so on, up to six attacks. Now, when your commander gets, so let's say they roll an 11, they got a hit. Then you have to roll a die. On a one, two, or three, the commander is slain and he will come off the table. You can bring on a reserve commander, but they'll be at a lower rate, or you can go down to your individual unit commanders, or if it's, yeah. So if he dies, you can bring on a reserve commander or go down to your individual unit commanders, <clears throat> which will be at lower ratings, obviously. On a four, five, or six, he's wounded. So if he's wounded, he can no longer participate in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He can still issue orders out, 
It doesn't say if it's at a disadvantage, but I imagine that would be a smart thing to add into your games, make it a little more interesting. And he cannot make attacks. He cannot. Uh, so if he's in hand to hand combat, so let's say these people are fighting, they're in hand to hand combat, and he got wounded. He's still in hand to hand combat, but he just cannot make an attack. He can get attacked, but he cannot make an attack. And so if your commander is on a unit, which the only one I can think of is elephants and I think chariots that have multiple wounds, then uh, you just roll for wounds. That's kind of the way I understand it is. You just roll for wounds until you get to the final wound. Since elephants have four wounds, you just roll for to wound them. And then on the final one, you'll roll the uh, uh, wounded die to see if he stays on or not. So that's kind of how that works. And... Yeah, I think that's it. So that's it for the command phase. It's pretty simple. It's really easy. It's one of the things I love about uh, Black Powder, Hail Caesar, and Pike and Shot. They're pretty much all the same for uh, the command phase. Super easy to learn. Not a lot of extra stuff added into them. And that's it. So the next video... I'll make probably in a couple days, or you'll see in a couple days, I'll probably make it right after this, will be the ranged phase, probably publish it in a few days, and uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see me go into more detail on as far as the command phase, just comment down below, let me know, and until uh, next time, talk to you guys later, bye.